Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Becky Safrick, and I'm the president of the Greeley Creative District Board. And I think we'll go around the room because we've got both board members and uh, general public here, and we'll let you all introduce yourselves, and we'll get started. We're really excited to have you here because we're really excited about this program called Do Tell. We've been doing this for about, our, this is our eighth year. And uh, we think we've got some really compelling stories that our community members have shared with us. And so we're always looking for ways to invite others to be storytellers as well and to kind of have a supportive environment within which to, to do that. So first of all, a little bit about the Creative District. I um, gave you one of the little uh, handouts that we have. Who are we? Well, we've been around since about 2012. We are a nonprofit board and we work to help elevate and inspire and promote the creative industry that we have in, in our community. We think that a lot of, well, first of all, we think that Greeley is a really rich environment for creatives and we are really just finding different ways to have people get to experience that, whether it's storytelling, visual arts, performing arts, a number of things that we do. On the back of this card are um, a list of some of the events that we do throughout the year. Um, that give you some idea of the breadth and scope of, of what we're up to. So the one we're going to be talking about tonight is Do Tell. Um, this one, it came about because we, if you've been familiar with things like the Moth Story Hour or any of the um, uh, TED Talks or events that really help people tell stories. Sometimes they're everyday stories with a remarkable piece of inspiration or they're funny or they're um, historic or they just have all sorts of different bearing on our experience, our common experience as humans. And so we think being able to provide a venue where people that aren't necessarily professionals but that have an interesting story to tell in some fashion will have a format to do that in. We normally have about five different speakers on um, the detail stage in the evening. Um, we ha it's a small theater of about 220 uh, seats, so it's not the big concert hall kind of thing, but it's a, a nice intimate environment. We have found in our experience that the storytelling is as much about the audience as it is about the storytellers. You'll find a really empathic group of people that are there because they want to hear your story and they want you to feel comfortable telling that story. So there'll often be that kind of um, sigh or this agreement or this humor or this laughter that goes along with your story because the group, the audience is always really into hearing what it is that you have to share. So it's a friendly environment and one that I think you'll you'll uh, find is uh, really conducive to telling stories, especially for people that maybe have never gotten on a stage before or maybe never told their story before. It's a really um, nice way to do it. And we're going to have a couple people that have actually um, been speakers before, Dan in particular, um, can tell you a little bit about what that's like to be a speaker for the first time. So we'll go through that. And so tonight, what we'd like to do is tell you a little bit, of course, about, in addition about the Creative District, we'd like to tell you about the Do Tell um, experience and what makes a good story and have you think a little bit about what uh, might be a compelling kind of thing to share with others. And you might even, as before the evening's out, uh, tell us a little bit about kind of what brought you here and what um, makes you think maybe about how do I craft my story or, or pick something that I think would be really interesting to share. So with that, um, I think what I'd like to do is um, turn it over to Dan and have him tell a little bit about what makes for a good story. Then we're going to give you some navigational tools to get you to be able to find out some of the stories that we've done in the past and how you might find out more about that. Okay, cool. So I did this, was it the second year? I think the second or third year. Um, and it was, I was a mountain climber, so I wrote about how the mountains helped me overcome bullying when I was much younger and how they continue to give me strength. Um, and I worked for the Greeley Tribune for 20 years, so that might be, if you recognize me, that might be why. Uh, I continue to write for Noco Style and some other publications like Colorado Sun. Um, but I enjoyed Do Tell. I really liked it. Um, they asked me to do it the first year, and I said, no, there was, I don't have any kind of story. Why would I do that? And then I remember mowing my lawn <laughs> and thinking it just, something just hit me. I wanted to, you know, I'd never really written about the mountains before, and to that degree where it, like, what they really meant to me. And uh, so I remember getting on my phone and writing most of it with the lawnmower still running <laughs> on, <laughs> on the patio just for 30 minutes, just uh, taking notes. So um, these have worked in the past. I think you know, we've done eight now, right? So we've had 40 or 50 presentations. 
And I think most of them have worked. There's been a few that haven't, but I think for the most part, they really have connected with the audience. And I have a couple, um, I guess, guidelines uh, that if you're thinking about what should I write about, or I, I know I want to do this, um, or if you already have something in mind, you can sort of run it through these guidelines and see if you really think it might work, because you may not be sure. I, even though I was confident in my own, I wasn't sure that it was going to work, and so I um, looked up some guidelines on TED Talks just that, and ran it through that and thought it fit. So um, I think the first tip, and this one's easy, but you have to have a unique perspective on the subject. And so that 95% of the time, that means it has to be about you um, or a close family member that you maybe helped through whatever they were going through, or maybe, you know, you could talk about relationship with your parents or your child or, because that's about you too, right? I mean, <laughs> um, but I think that's the most important thing. I don't think you can just talk about a relative that you sort of knew and just tell a story that way, um, because I think you have to have lived in experience. It's the only way to really, I think, connect with the audience because uh, of the detail and the emotions that you feel going through this is really what's going to help people understand your story. So, um, and then this one is the tricky one. The topic has to be, here let's say, the topic has to be unique enough that we haven't heard it much, but broad enough that it has to connect with a wide variety of people. So why did I think mine about mountain climbing work? Well, for one, we live in Colorado, so um, there's sort of a cult climbing the 14ers. Uh, most people are really into that sort of thing, or at least they see the mountains and they've been skiing or hiking in there. So there's a unique connection there that honestly, if I'd given the talk in Kansas, it may not have had the same effect. Um, but it also has to be broad enough. So me just saying, boy, I really love the mountains, that's probably going to reach 20% of people. But me talking about how it helped me through a really difficult period in my life and maybe even helped me deal with the, I guess we could call it trauma. I don't want to get too, um, what's the word I'm looking for, dramatic about it. But... <laughs> Um, it did help me to deal with what was a difficult part of my life and how I dealt with it later. And so um, that's something that people, anyone can relate to, I think. And it doesn't even have to be about bullying. It can be about, you know, maybe I'm facing anything in your life. We all go through struggles, right? And how we get through those struggles depends on everybody else. So even though I'm writing about mountain climbing, I'm writing about something that 90% of people in the audience can probably relate to. But it's also interesting because I am writing about this. So the specific trip I was writing about was the, it's considered the hardest traverse in Colorado. So it's, it's essentially like walking on a sidewalk ledge for two hours, you know. Um, that's interesting to people, right? It's, it's a unique topic. I'm putting my life on the line. In fact, I did almost die. I fell um, and managed to catch myself at the last second. And so that's something that's interesting to people. It's an interesting topic. It'll keep them engaged. But I'm also talking about this other thing that people can relate to. So does that make sense? Yeah. We had a couple last year that I think really did fit this. One woman um, talked about her eating disorder which again, I find fascinating and interesting. It's a difficult subject to hear, but it's interesting to me why people might have that and go through that. But she also talked about uh, the relationship that she had with her mother and how that maybe brought it about, but also how her mother helped her get through it. So not everybody can relate to having an eating disorder. In fact, there may not have been another one in the audience, but 
we've all had difficulties with our parents at times, right? <laughs> or, a fa or a family member, right? Or maybe there's somebody in your life that um, is tough. Um, or maybe there's something even as other. Is this, is this the do tell? Yeah. yeah. So, were you considering presenting? Me? Yeah. Maybe? Maybe. I don't want to like, okay. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm just talking about like what might make a good subject for that and how you can sort of measure that. So, um, the second thing I'm talking about is it has to be a topic that is unique but also broad enough for it to connect with everybody. So, um, anyway, I, so I think that worked really well because we can all relate to adversity something that's hard, a difficult struggle in our life, even if it's eating disorder, um, someone might have had, I don't know, an injury, someone might have been sick for a while, um, someone might have had a car that kept breaking down, um, which actually could make a good story. But, um, so there's a kind of adversity there that we all go through. This other guy, I personally liked it because I'm an ultra runner too, but he wrote about running 100 miles, which is not something that anyone can relate to, right? <laughs> Hardly. But again, he, he talked about his divorce and his uh, difficult relationship with his, with his first wife and maybe how this brought that on. And, um, and I liked his story too because he didn't do it. He even, so there's an additional um, thing there about falling short of a goal, which is something that I think anyone can relate to at some point in our life. So if you're sitting there considering my subject's really weird or I don't know if people are gonna get it, they probably will, especially if you put it in that light. And I think that sounds intimidating, but I think it's easier than you might think to do. Because there are common themes throughout every story that we tell. Star Wars, Charlotte's Web, <laughs> they all have these common themes of adversity and struggle and overcoming, uh, maybe even doubts in our own life. And that's the kind of thing that you need to write about. So I have three little bonus tips, but does anybody have any questions about what I've said so far? No? Cool. Last chance. <laughs> Okay, so these three things I think make a great presentation. So if you fit those first two, it'll probably work. But these three little things really, I think, make them shine. So you have something unique to say about the topic. Um, so it's something that might, be, might make people in the audience go, huh. That's the best description I have. Is that's something I've never thought of before. That's something I've never even considered. I love um, the New York Times because they always seem to have one story a day in there where they talk about some kind of meal or just some pop culture thing and how it even affected, you know, music down the road or just something that did not occur to me. So if there's a topic that um, just didn't occur to you at first or when you have told this story to other people, they have said to you, I never, I never consider that. You might have something there. What if they say, are, are you crazy? Yeah, <laughs> even better. Because I've heard that 20,000 times in my life. And yeah, so, um, yeah, even better. In fact, I, you, you weren't here, but I was talking about my story that I've done this. Uh, I did it second year. Mm -hmm. We've done it for eight years now, and it was about mountain climbing and this awesome. really, really difficult climb. So, yeah, awesome. are you crazy? So, yeah, that are you crazy is a great, you, you're like, oh, that might make a good story for what we're trying to do. Um, this is also why, and I, I don't want to talk about what doesn't work because I don't want to limit you guys, but this is why stories like I recovered from a car crash or I recovered from cancer, um, just to be blunt, it's hard to find 
unique things to say about that. If you can, try it, but it's hard to do, right? So this is why, you know, maybe finding more unique topics. And um, I know those guidelines sound tough, but I'm convinced that everybody in Greeley has a story like that, at least one. Yeah. So. Um, There's probably people that aren't here that have really, really good stories. Oh, I mean, that's what I mean, yeah, everybody. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it's almost like I hired you just to come here and comment. I love it to comment on later. It's it's great. Um, uh, it also said something about the world we live in. I think TED talks are especially good at that. You know, it's almost a requirement where um, this woman who was talking about why some people make it in college and others don't, and she said it was because of grit. And so she went through this 10 minute description of grit and what it means to have grit. And um, so her talk was not necessarily fit all those categories. It wasn't even an interesting story, but it said something about the world we live in. So it was really interesting. Um, the last tip I have for you, okay, here we go. Um, if it's funny and entertaining, maybe that's all we need to, <laughs> really. I mean, I just laid all this heavy, stuff on you, but um, I think, so we had the guy from Distortions two years ago, and he had some, he had some, I think, thoughtful things to say, but most of the time he just showed a bunch of really cool, like, monsters and stuff and why he liked to do that, and the audience was pretty wrapped. You know, I will say that our workshops, uh, not our workshops, our shows, can get a little heavy sometimes because you know the, the, the guidelines that I'm talking about tend to be pretty life changing or affirming things, right? And so if you just have a funny story, I think the first year the owner of Margie's talked about being a Trekkie, mm -hmm. and it was and it was great because it was it was funny, it was entertaining, it was kind of dorky. Um, again, she had some thoughtful things to say too, but it was just fun to listen to her talk about this weird community. So. Does anybody have any questions? No? Okay. That's all I've got for you. I really look forward to working with you if you decide to do this. I also help coach um, the people. So like, essentially that means you're given the opportunity to work with either me or two or three other people that one-on-one uh, -on -one and we help you just kind of sharpen your presentation. So thanks for being here, guys. So what we'd like to do, if Andy, if you can um, tap on. So if you haven't sure. gone to our Dewtown website, um, do that because I think you'll find this This will be a, a kind of a punctuation mark to what mm -hmm. Dan's talking about. But I'd like to give you an idea of some of the stories Let that... Let me back you out just a second to sure. show you how to navigate yeah. to it, okay? I think there is an application there. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Oops. Yeah, absolutely. Not that way. So Andy's going to walk you through how to find us in the first place yeah. and then how to get to yeah. this particular sure. page and then yeah. how to get to the stories. So this is... This is our website homepage, and the address is GreeleyCreativeDistrict.org. And that's on the card that you have as well. Simple enough. Okay, and then in the header, uh, we have drop-down menus, including events. If you go to events and come down to do tell and click on that, it'll take you over to the, it will take you to the do tell page. It will take you to the do tell page. <laughs> <laughs> Says you. Okay. And this uh, is set up basically to, you know, tell you what's upcoming for uh, this year. We had, uh, until recently, we had all of the speakers uh, identified from last year's show so that they got a chance to uh, be, be pictured on there while we were promoting Doe. <laughs> Right. So while he puts you back into that, um, a little bit about, um, I want to tell you a little bit about the process that we go through, because I want to show you some of the titles of the other speakers, because I think you'll start to get a feel for the range yeah. of what we're talking about while he's getting us navigated back into there. Um, so Dan talked a little bit about what goes on when, you're, when you sign up for this, this adventure that you're on. Um, when you fill out the application form, that just gives us all some information about how to find you, what, what you can expect, uh, what we'll be looking at. One of the things we want to do is we want to make sure this is a really successful experience for you. 
And so to do that, we start out by helping to understand your story. What is it that you thought might be an interesting thing to share about your experience with something in particular? And then we'll find somebody who we think can help be paired up with you to help coach you through that. Even though you may have spoken about this subject before, we find that the coaches can really help you bring it home for folks that maybe aren't as familiar with your story that may say, tell me more about that. You thought this was interesting, but go back, go back. There's something else that you said over here that's really intriguing. So they'll help you not only find the, the hook that makes this uh, interesting, but also even just the title of what you're going to talk about, because even that is a way for us to start acquainting people with what it is that this is going to be about, or what's the... Ooh, that's a curious title. I wonder what they, they mean by that. So as we get into these um, stories and share with you, as we start going through the titles, I think you're going to start to see a really interesting range of the kind of stories that people have brought. So um, Yeah, and to get, so get to a library <laughs> where you can look at the, uh, the years past, uh, you're here on our Do Tell page on our website. If you scroll down here, there's one video that's highlighted, but it also leads into a whole uh, playlist of other ones. If you click that little button in the upper corner, you get a whole list of all of the ones up to 2019 that we had done. You can also click down here on watch our full storyteller playlist on YouTube, and it will take you to uh, a YouTube channel that has Maybe it will. It's not in. It's a pop-up window there. Here we go. Like this, and you can scroll through and see the different uh, programs and the titles. And then, if you want to watch one, it's just a matter of making it play. And just as a brief example, this is uh, one that where the speaker used um, a whole series of slides, sort of a slide deck, a, a, a PowerPoint show, if you will. So my story began far from here. It began in a beautiful city called Pachuca, Hidalgo, Mexico. Kind of give you an idea of where that's at. It sits right in central Mexico. So she had prepared a whole like deck right of slides like that, that then went along with her commentary, and that's a very effective way of helping to tell your story, is if people have a secondary visual component to connect to what you're talking about. People like those receipts like that. Mm -hmm. People like the receipts like that. Yeah. And notice that we don't have people in tuxedos or evening gowns or in any kind of formal. We want you to be you. And so being really comfortable with what you're wearing and how you're presenting. A lot of folks bring props that they think help them. We have, as uh, was, I think Dan said too, we have somebody with a lawnmower that um, that was a symbol of what you wanted to talk about in terms of a life lesson. So you can have anything on stage that helps you share your story. You gotta try to stop things from going crazy here. One yep, I know, I've got all kinds of windows going here. <laughs> I'm just going to start closing things as fast as I can. And we'll go back to that list. There's a couple in particular that I'd like to share with you that were, um, to show you that just the variety of sure. speakers again. So if you could open that back up again. The YouTube list? No, no, the, uh, well, either one, either, just yeah. wherever the playlist is easiest to show. So... A couple of real interesting things for as far as, uh, as background. So Chasing the Dream, Betsy Valdez, is um, somebody who uh, came to this country you know, the way a lot of immigrants do, and that is illegally, and had the story as a little girl, what it meant to trust, have her mother trust a coyote to help her get across trusting a stranger to take children to a safe place where they could um, really start a whole life. And she's been in the community for decades and is a, an incredible leader and has her journey was very fascinating and it, as a whether you're a parent of a little person who you think how could I do that or if you're wondering going to a country where you have no idea what the culture is going to be like what the experience is going to be like she really helped to bring that home um, hold my beer the, um, Heather Bean is talking about her journey as a she's a chemist and she's also a, uh, a, a Developer distiller. of a, a, a yeah a distiller. She's uh, talked about her journey of going from being 
um, a chemist and kind of working in one field and saying, I, but I really like distilleries and I really like what I could do with that and using her problem solving and creative skills to get there. Um, all, as you go through these, uh, you'll find all sorts of uh, variety in terms of age, gender, culture, uh, backgrounds. We really have a broad group of folks that we like to bring to the experience so that when you're going to this event, you're getting five really unique and interesting perspectives. Um, some of them were talking about experiences they had, not themselves, but they watched someone else have an ex uh, experience. Mitzi Moran talked about um, really how um, she was able to appreciate somebody who was able to give her encouragement, a stranger that she didn't really know. Um, there's uh, another one in there of uh, somebody that you and I both know that was telling his story about being in the, uh, uh, being a, a guard or a security guard in the Olympics and uh, escorting a person home that turned out to be an imposter and was uh, directing him to take me home to my home to my home and so he's he knows the language it's in Germany at the time and he takes this person in and he says now you need to ring the bell and he rings the bell and tells him who's there to he's in a wheelchair this fellow that he's needing help and he thought he was doing a good Samaritan job but really the guy was looking for a place to crash for the night and he had no idea whose mm -hmm. door he was ringing he just felt like he'll help him in and he was kind of an accomplice to something that he didn't quite realize was happening. Um, there are some folks that were the first time ever that they had uh, done something. It was the first time they had an experience that they wanted to share, whether it was jumping out of an airplane or whether it was um, meeting somebody for the first time that they had to relate to. But I think what you'll find is that the variety of the, of the presenters is great. Uh, he had um, actually performed. He's a guitarist, a, a musician, and he actually brought his guitar and told his story through music. So lots and lots of opportunities for how you can do this. Um, you, of course, we're all pretty familiar with um, Armando, um, and Armando actually painted a uh, mural the night of his um, presentation. So it's what you're comfortable with and what you, you feel like you do, but I think you'd find a lot of the folks that are here are really pretty, um, of a lot of variety. Um, Wendy Klein, also Wendy So says her name now, uh, brought a group of dancers because she's a, a choreographer. She wanted to have her story be something she could share about how others express themselves through dance. So, um, and the other thing I would share with you is that the variety of times, I would say that y'all uh, probably in terms of, of uh, presentations are looking between eight and 14 minutes as a presentation. So. Um, if you're inclined to have panic attacks, you don't have to live more th through more than maybe eight to nine minutes, but you'll find that it's pretty engaging once you start telling your story and your coach helps you pull it out a little bit and say, spend a little more time on this or maybe this is something that you, isn't as critical. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> so let me tell you Way what to cut her off. Yeah, like one, more, 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 more. So here's the process. Um, we want to have, a, this is the first time we've done a workshop to try to share with folks who just might be interested in this a little bit more about what this experience is like. And we hope that you'll kind of think about it and um, maybe give some thought to what your application might look like. And if you want to spend some more time talking about it with any of the folks that we use as coaches, we can do that. But you can also go ahead and just put a rough idea down. We don't need it to be really polished by the time you put your application together. We just want to know, this is generally what I think my story would be about. This is kind of why I'm interested. This is what my experience has been presenting. Um, we will, the deadline for getting that into us is January 4th, so in your application there's a time frame and a flow chart in the packet. Um, so take a look at that. Once we have all the applications, the way we'll look at this is we'll try to look at across all the different uh, folks who might have presentations, try to then look at what might be a really good mix of topics so that if we, so that as we're thinking about packaging this for the presentation in April. We, of course, need to know your availability and your willingness to kind of work with us with you on this throughout the next couple months. But um, if we don't choose you, it's not necessarily because you don't have a good story. It might be because we have two or three things that are sort of similar, and we're interested in making sure that we separate them out. So we may save you for another date if it looks like um, there's two or three people that have something similar to share. But typically, that's not the case. Typically, the variety that we get is surprisingly uh, the diversity that we are looking for. Once you're selected, after January, the, the team will meet, the committee meets on this, they will select the folks that they think have the, the mix of stories that we're most interested in, and then we will ask you to make sure that you can commit to all the dates for rehearsals and for presenting and getting the coaching and that sort of thing. 
And if you could do that, we'll sign a little contract with you. This is not a, a contract that, you know, we take you to jail if you don't make all the conditions. It's a contract that says, you're agreeing to do this, we're agreeing to do this for you. This is what we need to have this be successful. It typically involves making sure that we um, have a headshot of you that we can use for promotional purposes. Um, it also, we ask you to make a little video with us um, at the very beginning saying, my name is, and um, I'm going to be talking about how I climbed the Andes, or what I learned from my child, or uh, how my pet saved my life, or whatever it is that, that your story is all about. Um, and we'll help you with the title that we think will be a gripper for you. And then um, we use that information to promote the event. So obviously we're going to be um, putting together media, social um, posts, but also print media. So you'll see your, your face on posters around town. And um, we think that it's also compelling for your message to be, come watch me on this date. I think you're, when you tape it, it's just a few, like less than maybe 15 seconds or so. So it's yeah. a real quick little blurb about why your friends and family and people that are curious about you should come and, and uh, hear more about your story. Um, and then we, we just use that as part of our marketing and our, our outreach. And we encourage you to reach out to your friends and family too because they're often your very biggest supporters and fans and they'll be there to, to be part of that empathic audience as well. We always give you two complimentary tickets to the event. We do charge for folks to come to the event, but it's a fairly modest charge, but we give you a couple tickets so that you can have a couple of your fans there as well. And uh, Or if you want to just hand them out to random people, we don't care. <laughs> We're happy to have you just have a couple seats that you can call your own. Um, there'll be a rehearsal. You want to talk a little bit about the rehearsal, Dan? Um, so we have um, a week before presentation we usually get together like we did last year and everybody goes through you know they, they read their presentation and then um, we all comment on it which sounds really intimidating it's actually very warm and community building it was it was a really fun time last year um, and before that so really like the whole thing is just you write or you know you you figure out what you're gonna do. You figure out your talk, and then um, you contact one of the coaches, or we can put you in touch with somebody who we think will be a good fit for you. And um, you can work with a coach once, and then you can work with another coach if you want a different opinion. Um, and what I usually do when I'm there is I just listen to it, and then I just offer some tips and maybe some restructuring, and things that work really well for me and things that didn't. Sometimes we talk about if they want to bring props or how they should dress or something like that, but really it's just about making sure that the audience understands where you're coming from um, and that the presentation is complete. And the one thing I'll say about that is the people who took the coaching seriously really had the best presentations. And I know that sounds self-serving, but um, everybody needs an editor. and some of the best writers I've ever known in my life needed editors more than people who didn't. So, uh, people who weren't as good as them. So, um, it's a really, really good process. And the reason I like it is because it helps you focus on the creative stuff. Because it'll be my job to edit it and be the persnickety librarian and give you tips on how to make it better or how to improve some things. But you get to focus on the creative part of it. So, and then a week before we all meet together, uh, we listen to your presentation. This is also kind of a nice run through for you. It's sort of a, uh, because we do have a dress rehearsal the night before. And that really is more, it's a great opportunity for you to get on stage and, and give your presentation, but it's also for Andy to get all your lighting cues right, all the sound cues, um, whatever you're doing as part of your presentation. And you don't have to do anything. I didn't. But if you want video or anything with it, any kind of lighting, sometimes people say, hey, can I step in this spotlight? And then can I step in this spotlight? We have to get that right. And so that is what that's for more than um, you just doing your presentation over and over. Um, and then the next night, you show up and you give the presentation. And it's really fun. And it... It's amazing, it's just like theater, it always works out great. Even if I've had, we've had some real shit shows the night before and then the next night they go out there and really put on, do a great job. So 
Um, and then you get to go out and soak in all the love of the audience because they usually all stick around to talk to you and um, sometimes they'll be in tears. I've had that a couple, I had that a couple times after my presentation. Uh, lots of hugs and just talk about how you did great and it'll be something you never forget. I would add to what Dan's saying too is that the, um, as you think about that, that night, we'll order the, the presentation so that it flows really well between the different mm -hmm. speakers. So what will happen is you're all backstage mm -hmm. and you'll get a cue to go out onto the stage and then um, so one by one, you'll you'll have your slide come up with your name and the name of your program, and then if there's any props that you have, those will be provided for you on stage by one of the, the volunteers that we have that help make sure that if you're going to put a lawnmower out on the stage or if you're going to want to have a, a big giant bouquet of flowers to demonstrate something, that we, we take care of those details so you don't have to think about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so one by one, you go out and then you exit back onto the, the back part of the stage and. What, we've, what the experience is, is that each of the speakers is really cheering each other on. Mm -hmm. You're all, this is unique to you, you're all going to be on stage in just a little bit and you all have that common piece of um, reality at that point and everyone wants you to, to feel good about what you're doing and to be really successful. So everyone's there for you to do that. And then at the end we do, we have everyone come out and take a collective bow and then, as Dan said, we have the audience kind of leave, we have a dessert reception out in the lobby and um, it's incidental to the fact that everybody really, sometimes they want to get your autograph, sometimes they just want to say, that oh, really that, touched right. me, or that I had no idea that that experience was something that anyone could have. Um, it's just a, a way for people to relate to you afterwards, and it's powerful. Uh, there's kind of your that, small that, reward for doing it. I yeah. mean, if you need a reward, then that's definitely... Yeah, we don't pay anything except for two Right, <laughs> right. So, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is not true. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure this is setting you up for Paramount to come <laughs> back <laughs> right, right yeah. afterwards. Yeah. You'll now have a clip for that. Yeah. So. And that's and we also, I would share with you too that um, one thing that's been really nice about these um, presentations is they're yours to share later as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're really thinking about moving into a field where you'd like to do presentations or you want to use these for a classroom project or a demonstration mm -hmm. of some other storytelling or you want to use it as a teaching tool, this mm -hmm. is public domain so we're happy to have people use this and we'd love for you to share the stories of mm -hmm. others that have touched you or maybe you want to show it to groups that um, you think this would be really impactful for. The other thing that we have, um, Zechariah kind of um, doesn't really toot his own horn very often, but he's also in the theater um, world and in the department up at UNC and so we've really got professional help here on lots of levels that can help us uh, really make this a special program. And if there's anything you'd like to add as far as uh, what to add to what Dan said, I'd love to have you chip in. So no, I'm, I'm excited to help produce the event. It'll be beautiful and um, the only note I had in my head was the concerning headshots. Um, we provide that. It'll be a session organized mm -hmm. by us so you don't need to worry about um, producing your own headshot or hiring a photographer. That's something that GCD organizes and it's a gift to you all for being a part of the experience. Yeah, that's a really good point because we also want the, the uh, all the images to be consistent so that mm -hmm. when we're using it in our promotional materials that it, it looks good and you don't go, oh, I wish I'd used that other photo from fourth grade. <laughs> so not, not the one I wanted. So. so, questions that you have. Anything that we can answer for you at this point? How long are the presentations? Do you have a time limit? How yeah, we long? do. We have um, between 8 and 14 minutes is about the range, and it depends on what your topic is. Right. There's a couple on here that are as, as little as 7 minutes. Others have gone almost to 15. So it depends on how okay. that fits right. into everybody else's. Yeah. So, yeah, so you want to have something that you can be concise about. And there might be, you might have a bigger story, but maybe you're going to share just a piece of that story that you have. It feels like a long time. <laughs> I, was about, I was about to say, Pam, like 12 minutes is a long time on it stage. Is a long it really time is. It's like, yeah. try to get in a boxing ring for two minutes and see how long two minutes is. I mean, so, it, yeah, it can, um, but it also feels like it just, flies by when you're doing it, so. The other thing is when you're staying on stage, you almost can't tell anybody who's in the audience because you've got lights on you, so that you can't also, see anybody. Yeah, it makes it. Which I think is kind of nice. It is. You know? yeah. But you can hear them. Mm -hmm. And nobody is rasping or booing. It's usually like, it's actually <laughs> kind of fun to hear them react to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. 
So it, it says in the overview that you're not looking for professional or accomplished presenters. Is that exclusion criteria? No, not at all. We're just wanting to encourage anybody who's got a right. story to share. But if you are a professional and you've done this lots of times, great. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Raise our life. We'll take yeah. it. <laughs> and to be a professional, you've had to make money, right? That's uh, probably the definition <laughs> of professional. The theater artists might argue that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that starving artist group doesn't yeah. make a lot of money. So. Also, want to mention uh, just allow yourselves in this process of thinking about your story to dream very large. Um, it's not a no until we tell you no. No, we can't do that. No, we can't have that prop. So don't limit yourself and don't let the inner saboteur come in and <laughs> convince you that you don't have a story to tell or that this certain element won't work because. We have a lot of resources that we can use to try and say yes. We want to say yes, so come to us with any questions. Yeah, because one time I tried to get mine, because it was on CNN, and, but I couldn't get it because they're like, you need to be like a production company and all mm -hmm. this, like kind of what you guys are set up like. Yeah, just come to us with questions. If you have concerns about the effect of your story or you need a certain element that you, in your scope, won't work on the stage, we can figure out how to make that work. Mm -hmm. So just let us know. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of uh, monsters on the stage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we can handle, yeah, we can handle most of it. Yeah. yeah, it's a pretty flexible environment, and I think the, the goal is to, again, tell your story and using, it doesn't have to be, you know, lights, cameras, action, lots of drama. It, some of the best stories are folks that are simply telling mm -hmm. their story as a solo pre presenter, and they don't need a lot of the other stuff around it to, to tell it. So it's the compelling story itself that we really want to focus on. Um, I think those are the fun things. The other thing, um, and you'll you'll see on the guidelines too. This is not an opportunity for you to uh, proselytize or promote a product or sell anything or even even boost an organization. Although I would share with you that one of our presenters last year um, talked about her journey to um, helping form an organization that helped provide uh, feminine mm -hmm. uh, health products and sanitary mm -hmm. products because of her experience being caught without that. And that seems like a really personal, intimate kind of story to tell. But it was really powerful because it was something that almost everybody could relate to. If you've got a mother, a sister, a, a child, anybody who's been in a situation where they were caught in a compromising position and how embarrassing and how shameful it felt and how she rose from that experience to making sure that this was something that she could help organize um, a service around to make that something that uh, other women did not have to go through. And it was universally appreciated by the right. audience, absolutely universally. So she wasn't really promoting a product, she was just saying, this is how this led me to this cause that I'm working on right now, and that's perfectly fine. But it's not a advertisement for the, uh, the dog walking business that you have on the side or <laughs> anything else that you might be presenting. So, yeah. I've got a bunch of questions. Sure, go for so, it. Uh, my next one is, is um, this is good back to your last point, is it okay to have some kind of call for action? Like, I went through this experience, I learned this thing, and now I'm questioning why we don't do this with more women. I think I think a, present it, yeah. And let's and if if there's anything that needs to be tamped down or tempered, we'll let you know. But absolutely, a and lot of a lot of the that, things. The person that we were just talking about mm -hmm. was kind of doing a call to yeah. action okay. too. So the, yeah, that's absolutely. Do the talks have to be memorized? Not necessarily. We had um, one of the speakers on here um, actually felt better having some note cards and even a, a book that she was kind of uh, using as I reference. I had note so. cards. Mm -hmm. I and, and honestly, I didn't use them because I had practiced so much, but they were just there as a security blanket for me, like, right. you know, and, it, and that, it was very reassuring knowing they were there. So we don't, we don't mind that at all. In fact, if you did just have a script and read it, I would encourage you to memorize it, but that's fine. Yeah, that really was, is fine. Because um, I gave a TED Talk a few years ago, and I uh -huh. have the entire thing memorized. Mm -hmm. And then if you stop in the middle, then someone will give you a line. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we don't know. It's nothing like that. <laughs> How yeah. long was that? Uh, my TED Talk was 14 minutes. Okay. It's a lot to memorize. <laughs> and when you're a yeah. little nervous, blah. I think I only right. missed one line the whole time. But it, it, yeah, you had the things I would practice in the mirror while my son was Yeah, back it's real helpful to have and the. And by the end, he was parroting back to me the lines. <laughs> <laughs> It is kind of helpful, I would say, to have your whole script written out, though. Mm -hmm. uh, even if you yeah, choose to sort of ad lib it and, yes. and bounce around or skip over it, from right. my perspective, that gives all the crew and everyone else sort of the the cues yeah. that we need to put the right slide up at the right time. And so we'll take your script, even if you vary from it a little bit, and use that yep. for marker points. 
if you've got associated materials for it. And, and oftentimes, too, it's, it's helpful to see it on paper. I mean, a lot of people have said to us, oh, no, I've got it all up here in my head, yeah. right? You might. We don't. <laughs> but that, as, as Dan says, it's, it's nice to have, uh, if, if not just notes, more than that. You know, this is, this is, my, best, this is my best speech, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll mm -hmm. try to do as good as I can with this live, but this is how I would do it if I could do it perfectly gives you a chance to massage the message and get it, you know, really tightened up. But certainly bring your cue cards, bring whatever it is that helps you be successful in telling your story. Yeah, this is relaxed and fun, but not casual. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How many applicants do you usually get each year? It varies um, every year. Um, we're, we Five to seven isn't unusual, and, and we sometimes reach out to folks that we you know, just need a little bit of encouragement to uh, apply. So it's not a, a enormous screening process. Five way. to seven applicants, is that what you said? Five yeah. to seven has been pretty typical, I think. And then from there, we hone down to four to five, five to six. I mean, no, how many applicants, how many people put in applications? About five to seven. Oh, shoot. Yeah, so. I mean, we had, we had 12 last year. Did we? Yeah. We, know, we usually know. have, we usually do have a small group but we do have to turn some people down. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean we don't want you to apply because that's what makes it great, is the fact that we can have, and, and ha most of the time it's not because we didn't like it, it's because right. it fit within the framework of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, like the way that it all kind of mixed together and worked out. And, and we have had some folks that have wanted to, that have said, I'm not ready now, but I want to kind of go through the process and I'd be maybe more ready in a year, and mm. we keep them on file so that we can yeah, let them know. Yeah, we have people something. come back the next year and do yeah, it. You right. can keep applying. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if you say, yeah, I, I couldn't do it this year, but next year I can. Then yeah. Well, and sometimes we have, a, you know, a couple of people have very similar ones. And right. And so you want to split that right. out so that it's, you know, so that, yeah, we, right. we rarely have turn anybody down, but it's like it's more know, yeah. the right mix. Mm -hmm. Yep. Get a long list. Uh, I think the rest are kind of specific to the talk I'm okay. talking about. So good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Wasn't too long. That list wasn't long. <laughs> well, I'm just doing this the whole time. It feels like Are you thinking about doing your same TED talk? Is that what you're? Oh no. Okay. No, this would be one of the second TED talk. So. Okay. Cool. Okay. Other questions. So this is just a really brief thumbnail mm -hmm. sketch, mm -hmm. rough right. exactly. um, concept, bringing in yeah. questions about how to support the concept. Mm -hmm. If I'm thinking through, there's several ways to present it. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. presenting some questions about that yeah. here. That would be great. Yeah, if you want to say, this is kind of what I'm thinking about. I'm not sure which angle I want to take or how this might be most effective. We're interested in what the global talk would be about and maybe the message that you're trying to convey. And then we can work with you on okay. how you might okay. refine so that. Like, it can be mm -hmm. like 10 different angles. Yes, in fact, um, I think you might even find folks can help you say, oh, that one that you just said, that is really interesting. Tell me more. And yeah. So okay. So, so yeah, just get down to so general idea. So you can idea. just get a general idea down yeah. and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. say these mm -hmm. are the angles mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I'm not sure about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, it's um, think of it as a lump of, cl of clay right now, and you're you're still forming it, and we just know that you you got a general direction that you want to go, and something that kind of intrigues you will help you kind of. That's one of my favorite things to do as a coach is if somebody has a, says and I have an idea and I want to tell it this way or this way. We can figure out how to do it. You know which way you think would work best. So think about Dan's background. He's a reporter, so he is naturally curious, and he wants to help pull out the kind of meaningful pieces of a story and really focus on the the parts that are compelling or that have a human interest angle or whatever. So you've got the benefit of somebody who's got that kind of reporter mentality. Then you've got Zachariah, who's got the theater production presentation uh, persona. You've got lay people like me and Pam that kind of look at it from the standpoint of 
common interest and, and all those areas. And then you've got the uh, person with the video skills that will say, this is how it's going to look, this is how it's going to present, this is the kind of things we need to do. So hopefully we're coming at it from enough different angles that we can um, hold the mirror up and say, this, gosh, this is what we see and how you might do that. It's, and by the way, it's fun. It's really fun. Um, the other thing that happens, and this is both a, um, a joy and a warning to you, is that you're going to find yourself really, because of the four or five people that you're with doing the story, there's some weird bonding that goes on with people that are having a shared experience. It's kind of like an, you know, anybody who's been in a, whether it's an emotional event or an ex or accident or whatever, sometimes you just connect with the people that are going through this experience uniquely with you, and it's really special. And I can't tell you why, but that stage persona that's happening when people are doing this together, it's just really, it's magical. And we get such positive feedback from people who say, I really enjoyed that, and that's something I'm going to carry with me for a mm -hmm. long time, so good stuff. I have two questions. So one is, um, you know, in the eight years that you've done this, do you find that there's a sweet spot time-wise? Like, because the, the, they range from eight to 17, like, mm -hmm. like, is there a sweet spot? And then my second question is, do you see kids come to the Phelps Theater for these talks? Um, first one, I'll let Andy say whether you think there's a, because you do the, uh, a lot of the video work, not just for this, but for other things. Yeah, my, my tendency is towards shorter rather than longer. Yeah, that's what I'm um, You know, it's hard though because content is what drives your, your story. And if it takes you 15 minutes to really tell the story in a compelling way, you need to take 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, coming from a television sort of background uh, and advertising, uh, I always think that if you can keep it to seven to eight minutes, that's, that's kind of the nice, punchy time frame that seems to work best in, in my viewing of them. My answer to that is I have sat through three hour movies that seemed like five minutes, and I've sat through an hour and a half. I've sat through hour and a half movies that felt like three hours. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it, it really is story driven. But Andy's point about trying to be concise and, and brevity is is very powerful. And as far as folks that come, the audience is as varied as the speakers. And I would say some people bring their families, and a lot of times it's children. Others are more college age and above, and uh, peers. So I think it's all over the. Are place. you asking because? Is your topic a little adult? Is that what you're... Uh, it's not like a radar kind of thing. It's just that it's about loss and it's mm -hmm. about shipwreck in Africa. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we have a lot of, I think, tough subjects mm -hmm. that I would call PG-13 sometimes or... Yeah, I don't think... I can't, um, I can't think of a story that has been... So graphic that yeah. it would, right. But the topics are, are weighty yeah. you know, a lot of times. Yeah, I mean, like we, yeah. right, like yeah. we talked, yeah. like the woman talked about her eating disorder, which was tough, right? But um, nothing that I don't think would give a kid nightmares. No, and I was going to say the other the other one that occurs to me is our, our one last year about the the, uh, the prisoner who was a soldier who had been in mm -hmm. yeah, the bomb Afghanistan. And he yeah. talked about, I, 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 I blew up several times in my life. And he talked about, um, yeah both symbolically and literally, landing on a mine, but also times in his life when everything blew up. And it might be a lot for a child, but I think that's where being able to have a, t a title to your story and a, a quick sum of it, we let people screen their own uh, children and the audiences from there, but to date it hasn't been an issue. So, okay, cool. good Thanks. question, yeah. really good question. You might be able to relate from UNC to UNC. We deal with a lot of young, dysregulated adults. Yes. And in my lecturing, I'm finding I have to provide a lot of content warnings. And it's not, it's not really a crutch, and the students are coming to rely on that. So if that's something that you feel would not only add suspense to your story, but would make you feel more comfortable delivering your story, providing a content warning at the start, or even having a small content warning that we can have displayed under the title, that's totally appropriate as well. Yeah, good. that's a very good point. I'm dying to hear what you guys are interested in. <laughs> All of you have um, given us little glimpses of maybe this is something that's uh, got some extra punch to it. So um, again, we're really looking forward to having that yeah. conversation with you about what it is that uh, you'd like to share.
I mean, it says a lot about your willingness to do this event just by showing up to something like this. So it's really great. We really appreciate you guys being here and just expressing interest. And so. Yeah, we, th we think the fact that we've been able to do this for eight years with audiences that mm -hmm. have now come to really appreciate what the event is about and want to show up, but also that we continue to have speakers that mm -hmm. are... About how many people are in the audience? The, the seating will hold about 220, and we typically get around between 160 to 180. Mm -hmm. It's a... It's fairly full. It's, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and, it's, and when you like, uh, promote it, do you like give them little glimpses of this, what the stories are about or something? What we do is we have your, of course, we have your headshot, and then we have the title of your story. But we um, will actually produce a program that night that does a little more amplified version of what the story is about. Um, but we do that in the marketing. To, we obviously want people to come and yeah. hear about what it's about. So uh, that is a big part of our marketing push. By the way, we also have sponsors that help us underwrite this. So, um, for example, KUNC um, is promoting it for the month before, letting folks know that April 4th is going to be the next Do Tell series. These are stories about uh, you know, speakers with interesting stories and where you can buy tickets and all that sort of stuff. And then we also have other sponsors that underwrite this. Uh, North Range Behavioral Health has been one of our most reliable sponsors yeah. because they know the mm -hmm. value of storytelling. Um, How about the Greeley Tribune? The, the Tribune uh, did a story on promoting this event tonight and they are very good about supporting the press ahead of time. So we, yeah, we feel like you're going to get a fair amount of exposure for, mm -hmm. for this and we do uh, ask you also to make sure that you send it out to your networks mm -hmm. because you're, you're going to have a group of people that know you that will want to um, Actually, kind of you got a big network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys. Uh, I should have had it five points. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. Yeah, there's some. So, yes, we will. And um, we, we hope that that's uh, helpful for everybody, too. So. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. Well, if there's no other questions, we're, we're going to hang around. So, if there's any individual questions that you have, or if you're ready to turn it in, all right. <laughs> 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 it's a wrap. She's just a woman of action. I like that. <laughs> And we'll then be in touch with you. We'll probably take these and then, uh, like I said, the first week, first week of January is the deadline, so we will meet again probably at the end of that week and we'll give you a call and let you know what the next steps are. Thanks so much for coming, Joy. Yeah, thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I'm excited.